Hey guys, really quick before we get started on this episode, if you think you might like a Fireside t-shirt or other cool Fireside swag, including back rubs, uh, be sure to check out our Patreon page and consider becoming a patron of the Fireside Tattoo Network. Uh, it helps us continue to provide free content to you guys, and then you get a little gift as well. The link is below. Please check it out. We would greatly appreciate it. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast, the official podcast, blah, blah, blah. We're at the, um, <laughs> we're at the uh, uh, Star of Texas Tattoo Extravaganza, Art Revival, thanks. And uh, this is Dave Waugh, who's been tattooing like a madman all, really all weekend. You haven't really had any downtime at all, huh? Zero, yeah. Have zero you numbers. walked through and seen anyone else's tattoos? A little bit. I've yeah. walked through uh, maybe once or twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're we're looking uh and how many have you done the show before? Yeah, this is my fifth time doing it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I um I before we started doing this, I tattooed at it and I started kind of, the first time that I did it, they did it in Houston, but that's been that has to be like 2002 or 3 or something like that. Did did you ever remember being in Houston? No, no, the first time I did it, it was actually it was at this location. At this location. Yeah, mm-hmm. cuz it bounces back and forth mm-hmm. it seems like. Um one thing I noticed going through it this time is it's it seems like it's gotten to be a super like traditional Americana show. Like, almost everything that I see, not your work necessarily, but a lot of really really traditional yeah. work. I guess maybe that's just Austin. It's a really traditional tattoo town or something. Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I kind of yeah. like the fact that it's you know mostly yeah. traditional stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't mind the other styles or anything like that, but definitely. Yeah. Uh, traditional stuff's my favorite. What What is um. What's the tattoo culture like in uh, in in Baltimore? Uh, I guess it's the same as everywhere else. There's a good mix of everything. There's a lot of traditional-ish stuff, and yeah. then uh, then you have your you know black and gray and color portrait stuff and all that. So. Yeah, yeah. I had I had noticed kind of looking through your work that it's it, you know it's a very traditional approach, very mm-hmm. very clean, very solid, very smooth blends, mm-hmm. really bold. You've got a really unique color palette. Thanks. Yeah. What yeah. did it, did it evolve naturally, or do you like? Yeah, what? I just uh, I don't know. I just pick out my like three favorite col- colors and just do them for almost every tattoo. <laughs> Is that real? Is yeah, that I don't know. I there's certain colors I hate. Uh-huh. Um, I hate purple and I hate dark blue, and I don't like a lot of like really primary colors except yeah. for red. So I just avoid those at all all times. Yeah, and that I mean that 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 shows. It's uh, I think what that does is it like. It's a really interesting form of of color contrast because you have a lot of those colors are really understated. You're using a lot of black, just like um, mm-hmm. because you've got a really traditional approach, and then you've got a lot of really subdued colors, and then you'll yeah. have these pops of red. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it works best. I'll I'll do like a a ton of black. I don't even pour the other colors out, and I just kind of treat it like um, if I was only doing black. Like when I'm done, if it looks finished, and then I'll go through and do a lot of muted colors, and then like. I don't know certain parts that I want to pop out and just throw in the really really bright stuff. Yeah. Do you if you're you say you're finishing it like you're just doing black? Are you um do you basically just use black and and fall out like mm-hmm. a kind of, yeah like, yeah I'll just use black and kind of whip it out. Yes. Um. So you're not doing a lot of grays. You're not you're not laying many of those no. muted colors on top of grays. Those are actually muted colors. You're yeah. Using. I'll just do the black and kind of pepper it out and then do yeah. you know the the That's main color kinda. over top of it. But uh, yeah, I've just started using more and more black. Um. Yeah. As time's gone on, what um, you've been tattooing? How long? Uh, about thirteen years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, because technically, it's well, the type of work that you're doing obviously depend depends on being very solid technically. Because if it's not, errors really show through. Uh, I w- yeah, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
what uh, coming up in tattooing, did you always have that same kind of approach, or did you no. explore in other styles? Yeah, I would say like my first five years, I was just a terrible tattooer. Um, so that was yeah. my style, I guess. It was just <laughs> butchering tattoos. Like uh, I, I did my first tattoo in 2002. Uh -huh. um, the reason why I say I, I've been tattooing for 13 years is because after about five years, I quit tattooing because I was so bad. Really? Yeah, it was it was bad, dude. Were you try like working regularly as I, a tattooer? Yeah, yeah, full time. But yeah. I was going to college at the same time, and uh, yeah. it was just one of those situations where I I thought I was working hard, but looking back on it, I you know I was just yeah. kind of a slacker, huh. and so I thought that the longer I was in it, that eventually I would just get good. Because all the tattooers yeah. I, I saw that were good, they had been tattooing for a yeah. long time. So I was like, well, eventually if I just keep doing these, they'll get better. Yeah. And they weren't. So um, that was kind of hard to deal with, like, mentally. Uh. So uh, I quit tattooing altogether. I was one of those people that was just like, I, I can't sleep at night, you know, with huh. these tattoos that I'm doing. And I played music for a couple of years, and then I came back. And then when I came back to tattooing, I was really focused on, like, uh, black and gray, like, realism, actually. And then uh, I just gradually started doing more color stuff. And then it's weird how, like, the general public kind of tells you what you're good at because they'll start yeah. asking you for for those types of tattoos. You yeah. I had never drawn animals or birds or yeah. anything like that. I was always drawing faces and portraits and stuff. But, uh, huh. yeah, I just started doing those. And what, Why do you think that you struggled so much? Where, did did you not draw well at that point, or was it a technical issue? There was technical Definitely issues a issues. technical issue. Huh. Um, I was making my – you know, you had to make your needles – yeah. So I was a very bad needle maker for huh. sure. So okay. I think a lot of it was just using inferior needles that I had made. Um, I was just using inferior equipment. Um, Did you have a decent like mentorship or anything? Does I would say it's hard to tell, you know what I mean? Because I only have that one to kind of look at. Yeah. But um, I I know he tried his best. You know, yeah. it was just uh, I'm, I'm sure I wasn't necessarily listening as much as I should have been. Yeah. And uh, there was just seemed like there was less information out there because there wasn't there wasn't even Facebook. There wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't MySpace at the time. Yeah. So for to get any information, you were just getting it from the guys at the shop. Yeah. And it was hard. Um, it's a, it's the same. Way. Yeah, I came up in the same type of environment. No, no internet and having to make my own needles and really like, you know, making the needles for the day. Yeah. And uh, and and it's the same way. Like sometimes I don't realize I've made a bad needle until I'm tattooing, but I only made that so many needles. Exactly. You know, which is yeah. like, oh, guess I'm using this one. Um. Yeah, it was it was tough doing doing stuff like that, and yeah. then uh, not even really seeing what good tattoos were. Like, mm -hmm. only tattoos I ever saw were in magazines, and honestly, even magazines back then were just like, you know, a lot of stuff in it wasn't very good. Right. And then some stuff was really really good, but it was always from some dude, you know, and some far off place of the country or in the world. And I was like, well, they were. I just figured they were just some sort of like magician that right. knew how to do it. And yeah. My tattoos look similar to some of the stuff in the magazine, so I was like, "Well, <laughs> I must I, be okay." Yeah, I must be getting like okay, yeah. but yeah. Uh, so, so you yeah. so you quit play played music, took a hiatus for a while. What brought you back to it? Um, you know, I'm not really sure. I, I was playing music for a while, and I think that's when I really started to learn how to like actually hustle and and work hard because you you really have to do that. Like I didn't have another job. Yeah. Um, and so when I I started thinking, you know what, I I wanted started getting the feeling like, like I wanted to get back into tattooing. Um, it was a completely different approach right off the bat. Like I ended up buying a bunch of new machines that were like quality machines. I started like going online and at that point I was like, oh wow, like there's, and there's two years that I was off. Like yeah. there was now all these like different forums and different information where I was like, you know, kind of just became obsessed with it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that kind of brought me back into it. Yeah, so that it's interesting because it's almost like you had it, it's like a tale of two careers a little bit, and it, it because I look at a lot of the like younger artists that are coming up now that are you know you you look at work that is just stellar. You're like holy crap, and and they've been they're three years in or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, some of do some that of them even like a year or two yeah, in. You're like wow, that's better than I was doing at like ten years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good, yeah. Good I tell a lot of people that I meet, I'm like, it's almost like if I didn't start when I did and just skipped that first five <laughs> years and then started, uh -huh. I would have I would have ended up on the same path without. Yeah. There's five years of struggling. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Um, the thing, and and I guess it's just availability of information. I mean, I guess in your case, maybe it was it was equipment to a certain extent, but availability of information, information of different styles of what you know you can see, like oh that looks good. Just knowing what looks good and what looks bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get to see thousands of tattoos a day if you want to. You just keep swiping, and you'll yeah. see more and more. Um, I just whenever I was coming up, like doing a tattoo, somebody wanted something, I couldn't even Google it. 
So I just had to draw it like, so I guess this is what this type of tattoo is going to look like. And, right. and more often than not, I just, I missed horribly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I remember just being petrified that someone would come in and like ask for a flower that wasn't in the flower book. Yeah. That we yeah. Had. Find like, the book. And yeah. then I, and then I'd be like, I'm going to look like a complete idiot. Cause I don't know what a peony looks like mm -hmm. or, I don't, or peony, whatever you call it, peony. I don't know what, whatever flower looks like, uh, or someone would say it and I'd be like, oh, I should know that. And I'm afraid to look stupid yeah, and yeah. I don't want, and if it's not in the book, I'm yeah. screwed. Well, that's one thing I, I find a lot of younger tattooers that I meet, they don't have the whole, I'm afraid to look stupid um, yeah. feeling that I was, I had growing up, like coming in the tattooing, like I was terrified anytime something was going wrong to ask someone in my shop mm -hmm. Or just, I didn't want to look like I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But so many young tattooers that I meet, like, they just come with the attitude of, like, I don't know what I'm doing and I have a lot to learn. And they aren't, like, the guy I ended up apprenticing and he's tattooing now, like, there's none of that at all. Like, he will ask me anything and he's not afraid of, you know, looking like he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Because he wants to do a good tattoo. So yeah, that's th just the end of it. That's that's and they, you probably just hit the nail on the head right there. It's just the the, the willingness to look stupid and, and yeah. to ask questions. And for whatever reason, well, I guess it's just because of the availability of information um, that 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 kind of tradition or that that kind of I don't know what to call it, but the way the tattooing was 13, 15, 20 years ago we were all scared to ask questions. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I did, I never wanted anyone to know that I was struggling through a tattoo. I didn't want my client to know it for yeah. sure. And I sure as hell didn't want like anyone else in the shop to know it. Uh, and, and that's, that, it's funny because now people are willing to ask questions, but they're, they're killing it and half the time they don't even know why they're killing it. We're sitting here talking yeah. to like someone about, well, maybe about their color palette, a young artist about their color palette. And he's like, oh, I don't know anything about color theory. I just do what looks cool. And then I ask people in the shop, if should I use this or should I use yeah, this? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy to see, like, to, to see that transition. Talk a little bit about your, um, like kind of the, cause it, I, we were talking about you having kind of a traditional approach or a very traditional approach, but you really vary like your line weights mm -hmm. a lot. You use a lot of uh, like linear kind of description and stuff yeah. in addition to that bold. Where, where do you think that evolved from? Um, I don't know. It's just something that's always kind of caught my eye. Um, I don't know. When someone comes to me with a design, I just end up, I, I feel like anytime I've done one or the other where it's all just bold lines or all really fine line, it uh, wasn't as appealing to me. Yeah. So I don't know. I just I think the nice little mix. The mm -hmm. I like to let you know do a lot of line work and let the lines do the talking, then just kind of blast color over top of that. Mm. Did when you're starting out a drawing, do you approach it? Are you a kind of a linear draftsman? Do you? Draw yeah, yeah. I'll do for each tattoo. It normally takes like about three or four drawings where I'll start sketching it real loose, and then I'll do like a little bit more of a cleaner line drawing, and then like a super clean line drawing over right. top. Before you um, do any value studies at all? I don't really do any value, do any value studies, studies that much huh. anymore. Every once in a while, if I'm like looking at it and I, I can't visualize it, but normally I can look at the line drawing and kind of just squint my eyes at it and kind of see like, all right, so this is how it's going to flow. And it's yeah. just in my mind. That yeah. Uh, one, one thing that I, in your approach is that, that it looks believable. Like you're using a, a, I can tell where the light's coming from. You know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. using a single light source, whereas a lot of people with a traditional approach, it kind of maybe intentionally ignore light source and they they're intentionally flattening things out and mm -hmm. like and not making them look like they could live in real space uh do do you consciously draw things that look like they i think it's just part of me with my background and like realism from yeah. growing up i always drew realistically like you know drawing like super realistic portraits or like anything like that so I, it's so drilled into my head of like where the light is coming from and how to make things like a certain shape that like it's probably taken me like five or six years to kind of s gradually flatten things a little bit but um it's still it's there so i can't help myself can't i always it. end up doing just a little bit more um than maybe i would want to but i feel like it looks pretty good yeah yeah absolutely do you um would you work in other mediums besides or do you just draw for tattoos mostly uh, yeah unfortunately i pretty much just draw for tattoos um super super busy at home so yeah. I get up real early in the morning and just draw for that day and then work all day and then, you know, go to bed pretty early and then I get up super early and do it all over again. Huh. So you draw for the day that day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, does the, your clientele seem to be good with that? Do you ever hit snags with? Nah. Yeah, yeah they're all cool. Yeah. My, my clientele is like, they just know what's up. Like they yeah. kind of, and they all fit like a certain format where they're all just like super chill people. They all just like, they're really respectful. Um, 
it's weird. Like at a certain point, I just these people just started funneling towards me, and it's like the all the same type of person where they're just like, do what you want. Mm -hmm. This is the, my basic idea. Just roll with it. And like, I show them the design, and they're all just like, cool. Let's just go. What do you, do you think you did anything in particular to to kind of like for people like that to gravitate towards you? Just putting out solid work, or do you think it's? I, I guess yeah. I think maybe just putting out solid work and being super consistent, and then uh. I don't know. A lot of people, when they email me, they feel like they have, they get a vibe about me just through, like, my tattoos. And mm -hmm. um, I did, like, this this promo video a couple of years ago. And, like, I don't know, it, it kind of describes me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, a lot of people email me saying they saw that. And oh. Yeah. Where do you find? Wh just on YouTube. Find? If you go yeah. to, like, my shops, it just stay humble tattoo promo video or something like that. Oh. It'll, it'll show up. Oh, that's interesting that, that, that people are still kind of feeding off of. Yeah, because I did that. it really, I did it differently than a lot of, like, promo videos i went online and like looked at a lot of tattooers like promo videos and i was like all right so everyone's pretty much doing the same thing mm -hmm. i'm gonna just not do that at all huh. so mine's like uh, it barely has anything to do with tattooing at first it kind of yeah. just shows like my morning like the behind the scenes huh. and uh there's like a i did like a whole um narrative over top of it so i, I wrote out like a na i used to write songs and stuff like that so it was pretty easy for me to just write a whole concept of my thought process and it yeah. leads all the way up to me going to the shop but uh it's definitely different i i mean yeah. some people might not like it but it's definitely different than huh. what you would out. ordinarily normally it's somebody sitting at a you know their station answering questions on how long they've tattooed and then it's like slow-mo shots of them tattooing yeah. and it's just like it's fucking boring yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, let's check it out we'll link to it in the in the yeah, show I mean, you should like it. it. If yeah. not, then like uh, yeah. you can't fault me for trying. <laughs> right. like, you know what I mean? Because yeah. there's so many people in this in the tattoo business that everyone just like one person will do something well, and then everyone else just like yeah. just fucking running to jump off the cliff as well. And yeah. you and sometimes you gotta think like, well, was that thing that they did that great? You yeah. know? And yeah, know. yeah, no, absolutely. And you're right. That is the mindset. I mean, if if someone oh, gets terrible. <laughs> yeah, someone gets the attention doing something, you can believe like yeah. everyone. You know, what was the thing for Soapy Reveals, right? Like, holy shit, everyone, like, wiping their, like, revealing their oh, tattoo. Man. Like, how did that turn into something that just took over the whole yeah. internet? It's I wanted crazy. to do one where, like, I, like, have the foam and I wipe it and it just says, like, stop it. You know, like, because <laughs> right. it's just, uh, for, for, like, a group of people that, like, really put it out there that they're so different and unique and, like, you're not, you know, fuck the world and this and that. It's like, yeah. man, you really are doing a lot to be just like everyone else here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, like, I can yeah. see right through it because, like, I feel like I'm not really, I don't know, I have my family and my friends and then the guys at the shop, but I'm not, like, I'm not Mr. Like, tap bro guy that's going to yeah. be, you know, I don't, that's not me. So yeah. it's real easy for me to see it and see right through it and just be like, oh, man, that's, that's pretty lame. Yeah. What uh, what's your shop like? Is it mostly a custom shop, or do you have? Walk -in yeah, it's or? pretty much. Oh, well, we do, we have walk-ins and stuff, but um, I normally don't have too much time for walk-ins. But we have guys there that do walk-ins. But um, yeah, I got a guy who works for me that does like really really traditional Japanese stuff, mm -hmm. and then another guy that does uh, the guy apprentice actually does like this beautiful American traditional stuff, mm -hmm. and then uh, I have another guy that comes in on uh, on Fridays. He does traditional stuff, and I don't know. It's crazy. It's like this like super animated traditional. Huh. Yeah. So for four people overall basically mm -hmm. so yeah. fairly fairly small shop do you have room for more do you bring guest artists we bring in we bring guest artists in a good bit um not as much the past like year or so i think last year i probably only had like maybe five or six guest artists come through yeah. um it's just i've been real busy with my family and, and work and honestly yeah. getting guest artists in sometimes it's it's a whole other job yeah because trying to like contact tattooers and then arrange it um you're juggling other people's schedules and your own because you want to make sure you're there when they're there and like right. you know I'll adjust my whole schedule for them so it it becomes a little bit of a headache but yeah um, when, when you're bringing on other ta so it's your shop you, you mm -hmm. own the shop so when yeah. you're bringing on other um, tattooers like permanent artists uh, are you looking for someone to fill like a specific void like oh we don't have a portrait artist we need or we don't have a realism mm. artist you're just looking for someone that fits the shop more honestly everyone that's come there i've never really looked for anyone or okay. even been like now hiring um i worked by myself for over a year yeah. when i first opened and i wasn't sure if i was ever going to hire anyone and i was like you know what when the time comes when you know people really want to work here like it'll happen and yeah. so that's the way it's happened you know each step of the way it's like people kind of show up and they really want to work there and you know their work has to be super super good um yeah and it just kind of works out organically like that yeah. rather than like oh we need this type of guy and this type of guy 
um, I've just been working really hard, and, and hopefully when people see it, you know, and when, a, when the, they're looking for another job opportunity, yeah. they, they see the shop and they're like, you know what, that's where I want to work because these guys are working there. Right. So. Yeah. That's a, I just wonder because that's another thing that I've seen cha- talking about, you know, tattooing 13 years ago and today. I, when people will post that we're looking for a full-time artist, it, a lot of times now it says, like, we're looking for a full-time black and gray artist, mm-hmm. a full-time. Yeah, tra- yeah, very like, specific. They're very specific in what they're looking for. It's like, man, that's just something that I never would have guessed I would see yeah. in my lifetime in tattooing. Like, well, when we needed an artist, we looked for someone that was just solid. And, it and, yeah. and, of course, the thing that's changed is, like, you know, in the 90s and early 2000s, you didn't really specialize quite like you do now. Like, everyone kind of you mm-hmm. kind of did everything. Uh uh, at that point, or at least in Memphis, we had to. It was like, if I couldn't do... No, yeah. yeah I, if that's, I couldn't, yeah, yeah, that's why a lot of my work, I feel like I can do a decent amount of stuff, a, a wide variety. I've done portraits. I do, you know, lettering. I can do whatever. It's because when I was first tattooing, like you you had to do everything. You yeah. couldn't say, no, that's not my style, or that I'm not into that. It was like, I'd be fired if I did that. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Um, but yeah, now it's like so many people are very very specific of what they do and i guess some shops don't want to see stuff like walk out the door you know but yeah yeah i mean I, it make, i'm sure i'm sure it makes business sense i don't i don't doubt that, that there's a good reason for it it's just something i never thought that i was mm-hmm. that i was going to see so like what percentage of your of of your tattoos that you're doing today are are um real like how many portraits do you do in a given month year um, or whatever? do you well i only do black and gray portraits now yeah. if i'm doing color portraits it's the like more traditional style yeah um but I'll probably do – it's hard to tell. Maybe it. I'll go, like, a month without doing any, and then I'll have a week where I'll do three. Oh, okay. You know, so, so it's a decent – Yeah, a decent amount of black and gray portraits still from time to time. Besides that, I don't really do any realism anymore. Yeah. Um, unless I really feel like I can do it and it's going to hold up. There's been too many times where – in my past where I was doing realism where um, it just really shouldn't have been done. I was trying to do it. I saw pictures online of people doing it. And I thought it would look cool, and it does when it's done. And then when I see it healed, I'm like, shit, this looks soft. Yeah. yeah. Is that typically what it is? It's like lack of contrast, lack, lack of pop, no rule. Yeah, and just lack of, you know, it wouldn't, it doesn't stay as well. It just looks so light where you have to get right up on it and see yeah. it. And, uh, you know, you go to take a heel picture, and you're like, yeah, it looks all right. But I yeah. don't know. For me, that's not really what I want my tattoos to look like. Right. So that's why I started. Uh, what I was originally doing was when those people would come back, I'd be like, oh, let me, um, put some outlines i'd start yeah. outlining it after the fact yeah and it would get done i'm like oh that looks really good and then i start realizing like why don't i just outline, outline it? it yeah to begin <laughs> with right. like because people come back with portraits and stuff like that yeah and I, i'd end up outlining it and be, and they'd be like oh man it looks so great with these outlines yeah. so eventually yeah i was just like uh, just approach it that way yeah yeah so is your approach pretty similar if you're if, from your more traditional tattoos to your um to your portraits are you kind of like the way that you lay them out the way that you tattoo them or is it a similar approach do you like um, technically well, do you the go? black and gray portraits are definitely a little different i still outline the eyes nose mouth and all that um but it's just a softer you know everything yeah, goes soft just softer yeah 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 um you said you're booking out about how far now um well it's hard to tell because like I only book like twice a year and I just take oh, okay. like a list of names. And then huh. as the months go by, I just kind of go through the list and figure out what I want to do and just pick it out like that. Um, what, what does that look like? So if someone, if someone that wants to get tattooed, they come in and they basically, you have a contact form that they fill out what they want. And all yeah, on my, and on my, they email me. Um, right. and then I go through, this is the first time I'm doing it like that. Normally in the past, I would just do bookings twice a year. And then like for an entire month, I would do consultations every day uh, of these people. I would, you know, I said I would do their tattoo yeah. and I ended up doing like five or six consultations a day. I'd get booked out like eight to 10 months, uh, you know, within a month. And it was a little bit too much. So I kind of started the whole waiting list thing. Yeah. Before I started doing that, I was booked out like about a year and a half. Wow. Um, so now I feel like if I took everything and, and, booked them it, would, it might be a little a little over two years wow. but yeah. um that's why i don't do that anymore yeah, yeah. That, that would be tough and we were we were just talking in the last interview about how you know you someone you have a consultation with someone you book an appointment and it's eight months down yeah. the road that's a long time for them to really anticipate it for one thing and then it's plenty of time for you to forget everything of, yeah. that was significant about that conversation you, uh, mm-hmm. the, you, you know like your notes may not be like god i hope i was on my game that yeah. day and i made good notes yeah a lot of times people too they, they either want to change their mind or their idea and yeah. Uh, one like weird thing for me is like I like to be able to visualize the person that I'm tattooing. Yeah. And so like eight months down the road, all I see is a name, and it says, you know, Jessica wants this, 
and I can't visualize what she looks like. So, you yeah. know, when I'm drawing it, sometimes the person would show up, and I would look, and I'd be like, oh, this is not going to, you know, it's oh, yeah. not going to work for that person. So yeah. I ended up having to redraw it, um, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. So I don't yeah. know, it's kind of nice as I'm drawing to, to imagine the person and be like, all right, what would look good on them? Because every person... You know, it's it's not the same thing. If I'm drawing for a guy, it's going to look different than I'm drawing for a girl. If it's, like, you know, a yeah. cute little 18-year-old versus some, like, biker chick, you know, right. I'm going to draw it way different. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, that's a great that's a great point. I hadn't thought of it that way. But, yeah, being able to visualize the person probably is a – Yeah, uh, it's a, a huge a, thing. Yeah, yeah, a big thing. And especially, like, people shape differently. If you're drawing yeah. to a, you know, to a forearm, is it an 18-year-old, 100-pound yeah. girl? Or yeah, is it a 180-pound exactly. biker girl? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of times I drew something yeah. out, and I was like, oh, this is going to look awesome. And, the, and then the guy shows up, and he's, you know, fucking giant. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, yeah. this isn't going to fit. Even when I blow it up, I'm like, this isn't right. Yeah. So – yeah, it can be a little tricky. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree, and I, that, that's thing, that's something I'm always interested in uh, asking other tattooers about is how they handle their their bookings. Oh, and, and I, yeah, I yeah. ask everybody because I'm kind yeah. of like, what's the right move, you know? Yeah, yeah, because you know, on one hand, you don't want to just lose people or blow people off, but then you also don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. End up it took me a while. I, I started doing that about two years when I, when I first started like turning tattoos away. Yeah. Um, before that, I would do anything. Like yeah. as long as I thought it was going to be a good tattoo. Mm -hmm. Like if it wasn't what I was into, I would still do it because the person wanted to get tattooed by me. I was yeah. like, who am I to tell them no? Right. Um, and but after talking to a lot of people, they were like, it's not going to help your career if you know only one out of every twenty or thirty tattoos you're doing, you know, that you're actually stoked about. Like your career right. is going to move along r real slow. Yeah. Um, so I started doing that, but at least when I, when I do decline it, I'll actually recommend someone locally that yeah. does what they're looking to do. Yeah. And people seem to be really happy with that. And then the other tattooers are happy that I'm like referring people to them. Mm -hmm. They get a better tattoo because that guy is super stoked to do it. He has more mm -hmm. experience in it mm -hmm. and then they get, you know, they're getting a better tattoo. Yeah. I, I can't agree anymore. I think it's like the best way to build kind of camaraderie uh, in your tattoo community mm -hmm. uh and not just referring to other people in your own shop but wherever they, yeah i refer yeah. all over yeah, town all over there's the certain places. people where i'm like this guy does killer black and gray um you know i'll send people to, to him you know other people like that someone wants a color portrait that's like a realism i'll mm -hmm. you know i don't do those so i'll, I'll send them yeah. to the people that do that yeah i think that probably is one of the outside of uh, this kind of like open lines of communication that we have in tattooing now outside of it really helping artists get better faster i think it's done a lot to help like shops in the same town get along because when i first started it was just nothing but shit talking between shops mm -hmm. like you never would refer someone to another oh yeah shop. oh no like way. i said i would have been fired for that yeah. too if i yeah. referred someone to another shop yeah for sure. yeah so that, that's that's definitely a uh, a plus I, mm -hmm. in my mind i know some people that want it to uh who were we podcast we were podcasting with yogi barrett do you know yogi barrett mm -hmm. i've never we, met him but uh we, yeah i really like his work he, yeah he's really good uh he's he hasn't been tattooing a long time but man he really longs for like old school like tattooing where se secrets are not shared and all that kind of stuff I'm like yeah. dude i don't think that you really know what you're wanting right now but i mean he does he's a smart guy and he's uh and he's an awesome tattooer but i had just told him i was like man there's no way you could be doing this quality of work five six years in if you had started tattooing in the 90s there's no even if he started in 2000 or 2001 yeah, yeah like it would no take way. yeah yeah so but uh uh, but yeah, it's funny. A lot of a lot of tattooers do kind of like long for that time again for whatever reason. I guess it's just nostalgic. I mean, I feel like you can't honestly long for it unless you were living in it. Yeah. So I think a lot of the tattooers is that long for it. Some of them are old school tattooers, which is fine. Yeah. But some of them, yeah, they never even. You know, yeah, a lot of a lot of people. Yeah, I see a lot of like old school tattooers here that have only been tattooing like four years. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's really the old school. Like yeah. I've been tattooing for 13. I feel like it's not even like old school tattooing. Right. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Man, thank you for taking the time. Uh, uh, this we'll was awesome. Put, yeah. We'll put contact information. So when are you going to open your books again if people do uh, want to get Actually, tattooed? February. So okay. a couple of days. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, this will be out before that. So most likely. So um, just if you guys are interested, that now's your chance for because you'll close them back up until what later in this year? Um, what I'll probably do is keep them open for a, a little while, maybe a month or so uh -huh. until, you know, the list gets like a little overbearing. And then I'll stop until uh, probably August or September. Yeah. Jump in now. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was a blast. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Go to Tattoo Improvement. Sign up. We'll see you guys next time.